Good evening, y'all. Hi, my name is Lana. I live in the Clearwater, Florida area. I'm a Floridian. I'm very blessed because it's a lot warmer here than it is in the rest of the United States. Hey, who all is in the house with me tonight? I am all about my medicinals, my edibles. I don't know about y'all. I like it cannabis infused because that's where I get my healing. It makes, it does a body good, doesn't it? Tell me in the comments, where are y'all coming in from? How do you take your cannabis? Do you take it in, a, in the form of a muffin? I had a special delivery the other day. I'm gonna bite into it while I'm making my edibles. So, I kinda got a little spoiled growing up. I didn't know any better. My dad is amazing when it comes to making edibles. And, well, when I was a little girl, I used to think that the tomato plants were supposed to be taller than me. I didn't know any better. So here I was, this little girl, I was like five years old, maybe six. Those weren't tomato plants. Well, what were they? I thought they were tomato plants. Apparently, he was growing in between the, the tomato plants. And to me, they looked the same. So I didn't know any better. So in the comments, let me know where you're tuning in from and any questions you may have. What is your preferred method of cannabis? Do y'all have some fancy bongs, some nice pipes? Maybe you got these e-cigarette e lighters that you can dab with and resin with. Resin, resonate, that's what I'm talking about. So, <clears throat> these are itty bitty. My dad's really excited about this, by the way. Look at how small these are. <sighs> Let me tell you. I only had what looks like about maybe a quarter, maybe a little bit less than a quarter the other night. And I was feeling pretty darn good. So I should catch my breath before I eat this. Because every time my dad brings me something, he says, so you're gonna have to let me know how potent that is. Because you just don't know. For him, he takes it regularly. So he's built up a tolerance. I'm kind of a little bit, bitty me. I'm a lightweight. So this could put me to sleep and I can get very, very silly real quick. Although I'm already silly beforehand. <clears throat> so, oh, and I need my water too. So sometimes I get a little bit, you know, what we call, oh, the squirrel. Yeah, a little distracted in the kitchen. But this is where I like to hang out and this is my laboratory, my alchemist love kitchen, right? It's the love lab, as I like to call it. And so, chocolates are my specialty. And I've had, ooh, hello, well, my necklace is caught on my, my, my ponytail. I, I'm catching the wave with my ponytail. So, so my friends who have tried my chocolates do really enjoy them because I kind of infuse not just the cannabis oil that I've made, I also have cannabis infused honey too. But I also, um, yeah, I get a little bit, like, sometimes my breathing is labored, so I have to be really calm. And between meditation and doing things like this, it's really helped with my anxiety, personally, because I've had to work on my breathing technique. My breath has always been a little bit kind of shallow, but um, I've learned to breathe deeper into my pelvic floor and open things up so I could actually breathe fully into all of my body and be present. And so I get these like, what feel like yawns. Do y'all ever get that where you're like, ooh, I can't catch my breath? This really, really helps, which is why I thought, you know, y'all probably have similar in interests in cannabis, right? It's all about healing the body because cannabis does the body good with those endocannabinoid receptors and infusing and integrating because we're connected, right? So here we go. Mm, oh my God, this is so yummy. This is just one time. And I'm a yoga instructor as well. So here I am taking a course where I'm trying to do a meditation as part of my, my course and my practice. I had to do it for a certain amount of days in a row without a break. 
I'm getting ready to meditate. My dad made these amazing brownies. We're talking lip smacking good. Like the kind where you take a little bite and you're like, ooh, these taste so good. And then you're like, ooh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. This was one of the few times I can tell you my head was going, like I couldn't stop it. And I'm going, make it stop. I can't sit still. I can't meditate on this. This is so not working. <laughs> so here I am having this hilarious kind of crack up slash like, I don't know. It wasn't really a meltdown. I was just like, I can't handle this. Make the high stop. It's too high for me right now. <laughs> Long story short, I got through it. I'm still alive, right? But to this day, I know my dad's stuff can knock my, me off my butt. So, and I have been known to kind of like not miss a crumb because to me, this is like gold. I'm sure the rest of you out there probably feel the same way I do. So these particular cupcakes that he made, cannabis infused, these have like this angel food kind of texture. They're gluten free because I'm allergic to gluten. I have to be really careful about cross contamination, which cannabis also has helped me with the healing process as well. They're like kind of spongy and they have almost a flavor of, and a texture of an angel food cake, but chocolatey and it's, it melts in your mouth. I probably shouldn't eat the whole thing, but I might. And this is like three quarters of it. Mm. He said he used three grams and he got, I think, 33 of these little muffins out of them. But the previous batch used five grams and I can't remember the strain he said he used. He used five grams and a friend of mine ate a whole one. And apparently it was pretty darn potent. I can't speak, it wasn't my experience, but I did see it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and as we all know, we never know how long it's gonna to take to affect our body, right? This could kick in right away, and this could take two hours. I've had that happen before. I've had that happen with my own edibles. And they're so good. And so he brought me four. I am going to eat all four of them, or all, not all four of them, I'm going to eat the whole one that I have in my hand. Hi Dion, how are you tonight? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Where are you all tuning in from? Drop in the comments, let me know. How do you prefer your cannabis? Share, right? Yummy. These are like little mini cupcakes, I mean like the itty bitty ones, they're like Silver dollar size is so adorable. And my dad really makes, my dad had a restaurant when I was growing up. And so that was the other thing. And I used to think it was normal to get the munchies in the middle of the night because my dad was always cooking in the middle of the night. And my dad went to Woodstock and all that cool rad stuff, right? <coughs> I personally think that is the raddest to have, a per, have your father be like so ahead of the game back then and so in love with this this form of, of, of healing, right? Medicinal. I love that. I like my bud, however. I'm serious. I am serious. I personally prefer it in food because you get so much more benefit out of it. And you still can get it. You can get all the effects that you would if you smoked it. Just that extra added benefit as far as I'm concerned. So, um, and for me, I it's, it's tough on my lungs. And I'm currently just finishing up a little bit of this respiratory thing that's been going around. Feel significantly better since I had to go and get some, um, like it's an herbal concoction. So I'm trying, trying new modalities. You've never tried an edible before. If you have not, I'm telling you, I wish I, I were nearby you. I would give you one of my chocolates because I'll tell you what, I've had nothing but rave reviews. And there's something I do, do for my own self and passion because, first off, I like chocolate. Second, this is my love lab. I love being in my kitchen. Anybody who's ever seen me is like, what is it with your food? 
Oh no, no. See, that's the thing that stinks. If your state isn't in legal, and on top of that, though many of you know, it's not necessarily the state either. It's DEA, right? And and all of that stuff that's going on behind the set. So you know, it's like. Ugh. Anyway, we can get upset about it and let it, it eat us from the inside out, or we can just go, you know what, I'll work with whatever that the rules are out there. I know what I can do with in my body. No more restrictions. No more dogma. So right now, here's one of the first ingredients I'm going to be utilizing. Cacao butter. So most of you who are aware, um, some of you who aren't, when you infuse obviously, the cannabis into um, like a, a fat soluble, it delivers better into your body. Something I've also known, noticed through my personal experience, that sometimes if I have an edible, and then there's two things that will enhance it, adding some vitamin C, because that's also helping with the healing, but adding more oily foods, like I love avocado, that's one of my other favorites. I've made chocolate avocado mousse cannabis infused Mwah, i'm telling you it's it's bonissimo right i lived in italy too by the way and so and i was in the air force for over 10 years i've got a whole history right so i got out of the the military with ibs and all sorts of chronic pain and hmm i'm still waiting i did ask them about whether or not they are giving prescriptions for medical marijuana i'm here in florida and they're like why I'm like, why not? <laughs> I mean, the government for years was doing um, special programs where people were getting medicinal marijuana without the public even being aware of it. So there were special programs in place for years. You know, awareness is key. That's what we're learning here. So I have my cacao powder. I have my measuring cups. I'm not sure how long it's going to last before the silly, silly, the real silly me kicks in and everything's funny. I mean, really? <clears throat> so, I have my special book. This is what I call my special book of recipes. See, I get all, all giddy because this is like one of my favorite things to do. So again, if you, wherever you're tuning in from, tell me where you're tuning in from and if your state is legal for medicinal marijuana. I mean, really, why isn't it across the board? Well, we all know the real reason, but you know, united we stand, divided we fall. The people have to speak, and it's starting to catch on. They're listening. They're actually finding the financial aspects. They go, oh, there's a benefit to the side. So, let's see. The other thing is I like to use Ayurvedic herbs because they also help with um, delivering like all that medicine to your body, and, and then it's getting this extra benefit and chocolate, hey, it's another bean. It's another fat soluble too. Oh man, Tennessee is not legal still. It's hard to keep up. I, you would think I knew by now because every once in a while I'm delving into finding out. California, oh Giovanni, I, I'm a little bit jealous out there. So let's see, I have a couple different recipes in here and sometimes I'll mix equal parts of cacao and carob. And sometimes I'll just go straight cacao it's a lot of fun for me, either way. And I have my trusty scale over here. I play with the scale specifically for weighing out my Ayurvedic herbs because I like to know exactly what's going in it. And then I have some really cool molds in the freezer along with a bunch of um, keef and, and bud and you know, like all my, my other friends. Oh, uh, what else we got here? <laughs> Kentucky's not legal either? That's crazy. That's crazy. What the heck? Ah. Ultimately, the first and most important thing I have to do is I'm going to have to weigh out the cacao butter because that's going to determine the weight of the cacao because you want equal parts of both so that it's, it, it's hard enough when you put it in the fridge and it's not going to go melting on you. That's what holds it. If you ever go out and you buy these chocolates out on the market, they put fillers like soy lecithin in there. They don't even, a lot of them don't even use real cacao butter anymore. I don't know what the heck that is other than, again, it always comes down to the, you know, what's the cheapest way to deliver this product. 
and soy. Mm, I don't think so. So let's see. Let's see one of my largest batches that I have in here. I'm going to try with 200 grams because 200 grams here. Oh, South Africa is not legal? That's crazy. Oh my gosh. I would never have guessed that. <coughs> so what I like to do is start out with, and I usually like to double boil, like, you know, put the water in and then bring it to a, a warm blo uh, boil. And then sit this inside of it. Um, ultimately, I think I need a little bit more than that. But this, the pot I had before, I ended up burning the base of it, and it set perfectly so that it wasn't sitting on the on the bottom of it, because you don't necessarily want it to come up and over the sides and all that. So what I'm going to do is put this on, let's say four. Four is always a good start. How's everyone's weather? Is everybody staying warm, depending on where you're at, if you're in the States? I'm not up north, I hope. And so I'm gonna also tear this so that it, it gets the reading with the, the container. So we're on grams. I'm gonna open up our cacao butter. I like to recycle everything. No, it is not where we are. Oh, it's the last. Ugh. Well, we'll send prayers your way that hopefully somehow it catches on soon, right? Oh, the tear. So, this one we're going for 200 grams of cacao butter. And I already know what I'm going to do in this. Ooh. Well, maybe we'll go 225 because I've already gone over that. So we're at 225. And each time I do this, I have to write it down just because of the difference in how I do things sometimes. Oh, freezing ice. Oof. So I also grew up in Maine, Massachusetts, New York, and here in Florida. On top of that, was in the military and traveled around a bit. I don't wish the cold on anybody. I've had plenty of frostbite in my life. I hope you all are, are definitely exercising self-care. Grabbing a pen. And so... Let's see, it's a new year, it's a new start. It's a fresh batch. 2018, wow. Didn't 2017 flash on by? And it is January 11th, 111. Ooh, and it's an 11 year. So 200 grams, no, two, I said 225. 25. See, it's really important. I'm sure many of you already know this. Write down your stuff. If you don't, what are you going to have to you to to compare it to later, right? I have cacao butter. Now, I don't usually consume animal products, but I have been known to also use regular butter or co coconut butter. And the infused cannabis oil that I have is coconut butter. I prefer coconut butter. I kind of prefer the taste as well. The way I make it is a little different than a lot of the instructions I've read out there. What I have done is I have soaked the bud in my own crock pot with um, cheesecloth, which is kind of messy anyway, but hey, what the heck. With the, with the bud inside of the cannabis, uh, the cheesecloth, and infused the coconut oil using that cloth with the the bud and mine comes out tasting to me I consider it like buttered toast that flavor and the smell is nice too whereas some of the other stuff out there I found kind of smells like bong water and has a funky taste to it too even the stuff my dad makes I'm like dad it still has that really strong bud flavor and my stuff for some reason just has this really yummy nutty flavor now everything's going to have your energy infused in it is my my assumption because everything I put into what I make comes out tastes pretty good to me, I don't know. And I'm pretty picky by the way. So, I'm going to put this on the stove top because it needs to melt. Sometimes I'll be honest, I get lazy and I just stick the whole thing on the like I'll just do this. 
might just do it for a little bit, enough to warm up this bowl. Fortunately, on this particular container, it has a little loopy thing, so I can avoid burning myself. I can be a little klutzy. I do decarboxylate. That's the other thing, Deborah. Thank you for asking that question. That's a, that's a fabulous question. So decarboxylation, for those of you who are unaware, it, I keep the bud in the fridge. Um, what I have been known to do is to do the chlorophyll, like when you make an RSO oil, the Rick, Rick Simpson oil, you pour in, let's say, it's something like 97% alcohol, um, isopropyl alcohol. You put it in a jar, you let it sit for like 5-10 minutes. You pour that off, and that's what you make the RSO with because the chlorophyll from the bud goes in there. And then you would heat that up in one of those um, pressure cooker things with the top off. So that's one way I did that. And then I took the, the bud that was soaking and it's a little bit nicer because it's smoother and it's not as strong for edibles. I've done that. The other way that I've done it is to powder it up, powder it up after baking it in the oven because we decarboxylate in the oven, right? And I'm trying to remember what, does anybody remember the temperature you have to put it? Yeah, I use a rice cooker too. It's like a little itty bitty mini one that we used. And I don't have it here because last time I made it was with my dad. <coughs> but what I have done also is to just take all the bud, put it into decarboxylate in the oven, and then you can grind it up because it's dry and it gets rid of all the moisture. Dry, as for it's dried up and, and decarboxylated, you can actually make it 220 degrees. Thank you very much. I knew it was the twos. And then you grind it up and you can use the powder form, which is just as effective depending on what you want. But ultimately, even if you use the powder form, you wanna make sure you're delivering it with an oil base, right? There you go, 200, 220, good numbers. I love that, peace love tacos. It's not Taco Tuesday, but it's always a good day for tacos in my mind. <clears throat> so now now that I know I've got 225 grams of cacao butter I will use the equal part of the cacao now there's two ways I do this I have so many little methods and it's kind of silly but here's my little scale right I got this off of Amazon I also sometimes will utilize I got all sorts of rad gadgets in my kitchen. Stuff to play with, getting jiggy with it, sprucing it up. We got it. See, now that is definitely, now we're talking. See, you want it to melt, right? Can you all see that? I know you can see it from one angle. So what I'm gonna do, I haven't used the RSO in my edibles because it's so thick and tarry. I would love to do that. Um, if anybody knows a, tr a, a sweet little way of doing it, let me know. Um, because, you know, it's just like anything, just like hash, it's so sticky and tarry that it's like, it's better just taking it as is, or you would have to dilute it. So when we made the RSO oil the last time I did it, um, I, suggested we put a little bit of coconut oil in it so that it made it easier to also take out of the container because we took we transferred it from the rice cooker into another um, container and then I was able to work with it a little bit more malleable right toward the end as it's coming to finish if you add a few drops of coconut oil it makes it more and less less sticky right so it doesn't stick to everything I I prefer to do it that way so now I have another bowl, because I know I'm going to need a bigger bowl for all this stirring around. But I'm thinking, I've got two. I've got, this one's bigger. This one's bigger, right? I'm not using the big, big one. I use the little, little one. Unless 225 grams is bigger than I thought it was. We'll see. We'll find out. So again, I'm gonna tear this so I get like a, a zero on my scale. Turn it off. I'm really 
like meticulous about cleanliness. When I'm, you know what's funny about the magical butter machine I wanted to share too? I do not have one, but I know someone who does. And the magical butter, <laughs> the magical butter machine was designed by a guy up the street where I went to high school. So I didn't even realize that until my girlfriend said, oh yeah, that's normal. That's, that's something that comes from over here, right up the street. So yeah, I have not used it personally. My understanding, a lot of people, when they infuse their butters, whether it be coconut oil or ghee or regular butter, what I understand they do is they add a certain amount of water to it, and I personally find that turns it into bongy flavoring. And that's my preference is to uh, just to totally emit, omit the water and just, oh, what, oh, that's funny. The, um, I, I prefer to keep it just straight up in the oil. And that way I feel like I'm getting more out of it. And like I was saying, it comes out tasting kind of nutty, like buttered toast, which I don't eat anymore just because of the gluten I stay away from. <laughs> the guy in the back, bring him back. I oh, love that. <laughs> I don't know. He sometimes randomly shows up in my kitchen. That could, that could be fun. We'll find out. So, <laughs> that made me chuckle, sorry. <laughs> So this time of year is very dry down in Florida, very unlikely because it's mostly humidity. But when it's summer, thank you, Cynthia. The rainbow hair, I love that too. It's pretty rad. So it sometimes get a little dust in my throat. Yeah, right? Rad ninja with rainbow hair. So let me see how much, 20, 225 grams of the raw cacao powder is going to, sometimes I write in here how many cups it is, but maybe I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm just going to be lazy and just use a spoon. I do that a lot too. How do y'all make your medicinals? Oh, sweet. I am in Clearwater, Florida. And... I am here sharing my medicinals with y'all. I have to turn this, I think it's time to pull that off now. And uh, probably be better to do it in the double burner at this point. So we're gonna put this in here. And so, I do need to stir that. Oregon, oh, there's another state that's gonna really throw all the other states out of balance with their smarter way of, of cultivating and harvesting cannabis and marijuana, right? I'm so grateful for the education that is being shared in the communities and how people are wanting to become more informed. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why there's so much dust in the air. Okay. We're really blessed, aren't we? The power... Excuse me. Power of social media. I think it was. I think it was a little mini cupcake I took earlier. The power of social media and the ability to be able to find the information you need and want. It's at your fingertips. It's on your cell phone or it's your smartphone. And oh, by the way, I think that cupcake's starting to kick in. Oh. My dad makes really good cupcakes. And that was itty bitty. Y'all saw that, right? Silver dollar size. Ooh. The night is still young. This could be a long segment. I can actually spend hours in my kitchen. That is rad. I, you know, I went to Phoenix, Arizona when I was younger. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It was the first time I think I remembered seeing navel orange trees. Long before when I came here. And so, trying to break up the cacao. Looky, looky, I'm all about raw cacao powder. <laughs> Figments. Figments of your imagination. <laughs> I told you the night is still young. Almost sounds like a gong. Almost sounds like a bowl. 
What kind of bowl? A metal bowl? Bong bowl? <laughs> what is your favorite apparatus out there is what I want to know. <laughs> I know, it makes for an interesting evening, right? Look at that. I'm only at 55 grams, so we're going to have to start moving on this. Because this is, could be a long chocolate making night. I've been known to spend hours when I make this much chocolate. And this is going to be a big batch, as I already started out. So we're going for 225 grams of raw cacao powder. That's the goal. Right now, we're not even half there. Well, no, we're about half there now. 114, 115. Oh yeah, I might need the bigger bowl. That's okay. It's all good. All good. PA, Pennsylvania, in the house, representing. So if I had a chocolate, you know, like the whole chocolate setup, which I don't, I'd have that little mixer thing that heats it up at the right temperature. All of what I do is strictly by hand. But it still turns out equally, if not better. Or maybe it could be improved. I mean, I think everything I do can always be improved upon. Another reason why I need my edibles. I'm very hard on myself. Did I mention that? Moncton, New Brunswick, I've never been. But I, I lived across the border from, from um, New Brunswick in, when I lived in Holton, Maine, growing up. So we're at 218, 219. I'm pretty good at this, by the way. I can measure out with the best of them. My other go-to, I don't know, do any of you all out there use Kratom? I only just found Kratom about a year and a few months ago of 2016. Girlfriend of mine, also suffering from chronic pain, she posted something, and within a couple days, I had somebody else posted something, and I was shaking my head going, okay, now some... You know, then I saw a picture of a tree. I said, okay, now you all got my attention. There's clearly, there's something about this Kratom stuff. And she told me it saved her life because I know for myself, I've de dealt with a lot of physical pain. Hey, more Fort Walton, Florida. I'm in Clearwater, Dustin. Um, I found that, um, yeah, Kratom was like also a huge saver for me because I literally sometimes just, oh, so much stiffness and pain in my back. But over this past year, I've, I've found I've gotten a lot of healing with the edibles and the Kratom worked in, in conjunction with each other. But with the Kratom, the only thing I'm not care, I'm not crazy about, you have to take a break and allow your body to, you know, release it, detoxify, cleanse it out of your system because you do work up a tolerance to it. And eventually you don't need, you need more dosage and then I found one of the side effects was that maybe sometimes I felt even worse um, if I was taking it too much too often so now we have 226.19 I'm not gonna break that down I'm just gonna put it down on here 226.19 grams of raw cacao powder I have to write down my recipes because otherwise I will forget and I keep thinking oh I'll remember and each time I've proven to myself, oops, I make kombucha too, and I never label the bottles. It's always just a surprise of whatever comes out. Do y'all know what kombucha is? <laughs> Do y'all know what kratom is? I'm sure somebody out there knows, right? Okay, so this is a lot of raw cacao. And then on top of that, I'm gonna need my trusty. Go lucky. And I just put it in regular bottles. So I have my, yummy. You do use it. What's your favorite strain? I've got, I've got a white Borneo and a white, um, white horn. And then also I've used the yellow was really good. To me, the yellow was similar to the white, very mellow yellow, but high yellow. And then the green, as they say, in between. And I can't remember what strains I have of that one. And also the red. And the red, I, you know, it says it makes you sleepy to go to sleep at night and help with the pain. But I had somebody try some one time, and they said they were up all night. So I was like, well, see, that's that's how you gotta you gotta use your own litmus test. 
everybody's body is going to react differently to it, right? So now we're moving on to my cannabis oil because I got to mix this in. Oh, let's see. Cannabis. Can of oil. So, for example, at 200 grams, I was utilizing. Okay, we're looking at about. Mm, maybe 95 to 100 grams or that's over four ounces so we're looking at maybe five ounces maybe more so let's see can of oil see to me this is lots of fun i hope you all enjoy this <laughs> i get i get company while i get to do it and I've had a lot of people want me to, you know, give my recipe. I mean, I can give you the recipe, but it, it is a lot of work. And so it, I can't guarantee yours is going to turn out the same as mine, just because I give you the, the information. So here we go. I'm going to turn that off because this is now all done. Where am I going to measure this? That's the question. The other key is I have to be careful of my hands because this is hot. Yeah, that's hot. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah, an anti diarrhea too, especially the yellow. My understanding is I think it's also helpful for like if you go into those countries, the yellow fever and stuff like that. Figments of your imagination. See, this is what happens when you're high on edibles and smoking a little wacky weed, right? to see. We'll do this. We'll tear this. I measure it this way. Okay, so. Oh, looky, looky. And so this whole jar is what I have. I'm pretty sure this one's pretty strong. It's his hair. His hair. It's not a wig. So what did I say? I said um, something like five ounces. So we have to switch this to the, oh, hello, don't move. I have to change the setting on here to ounces. So I'm going to do five ounces. And then we'll add it to, yeah, this is awesome. So this is what, like I said, this is one of my favorite things to make. And it's so delectable, like you can want more, but it's really not not advisable if you had too much, right? Usually I'm happy to get like two, one or two chocolates a day. That's how I make my potency, but I'm not trying to go out of my gourd either. So they're just perfectly fine enough to, for my pain and a nice, nice treat at the same time, right? And either I'll take them in the midday, as long as I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like to be driving. If I'm if I'm uncertain about how how it's gonna affect my body, so I tend to um, stay home if I'm gonna do any edibles. I find it safer that way. Ooh, five ounces. It's gonna be a, so we're going for five ounces. It's a lot more than I thought. It might be a whole cup. I can't recall. I haven't made these in a while because I ran out of all the ingredients and then. And then I hadn't had time when I finally got all the ingredients. I'm telling you, you got to try edibles. They're the bomb. It's the best way to have cannabis. So healing. So and, and especially if the person who makes them knows what they're doing and how to make it taste really, really good. Have you all seen this TV show called Bong Appetit? 
oh my god, I'm like hooked and loving that pl that show. Oh, I, I wish I could, but my phone will fall off the, the cover. Yeah, they will change your life. Um, I'll show it to you though in a second. I apologize that my, so this is my, this is my cannabis oil. And it, the first half of this was all liquidy. So you can see like the liquid in that. Look how pretty that color is. It's like, it's got a little neon going on in there. Can y'all see that, that, that yumminess? Has a little green hue. Gotta be getting close to five grams. Or ounces. Ounces, not grams. Not ounces. I know there's a conversion factor. My dad's still trying to figure it out for his side. And we were also talking about the strain. The strain that you utilize is huge, right? I have a tendency to prefer, personally, the sativa strains. I don't want to necessarily always be going to sleep on an indica. And I find I, I prefer my body operates better on a sativa. Some people prefer the other way around. Um, my dad had his legs crushed between two cars. He was supposed to go in the Navy years ago. And um, let's try this. That should be enough. Oh, look at that. That's cool. And so when he, they, it was an inexperienced driver, pinned him literally bumper to bumper, not like bumper over bumper. And so my dad, when they went to pull the cars apart, the, he just fell. Nobody held him up. Like they just let him collapse. And he, and he, how was he supposed to stand up? And so as a result, it messed up his ankle and so for years, he's had trouble with his walking, his ankle, and then he has arthritis um, really bad in his back. So I, I, need, I need just a little bit more. There we go. Five ounces, baby. I got five ounces in here. Okay. Well, now I know what I'm working with. And then it'll be time to make more of my oil. So here's my yumminess. Hallelujah. Golden. We're golden. And how much is five ounces? It's actually 5.004. We're going to go back to grams because I'm always curious the conversion and it tells you. So grams, gee, grams are, whoops, it went, it skipped it. 141.9. So we've got five ounces or 141.90 grams. <laughs> so again, I've got this big bowl of the raw cacao. I'm going to have to melt this a little bit more in order to utilize it because it's still a little solid in there. But while this is warming up, because I don't need it to be turned on, fortunately, what I'm going to do is switch over to this one, get myself the safety. Hmm, that's funny. I think. So this is one of my coffee kombuchas, and I think it found its way out of the refrigerator. Look at this. I make this from scratch. Oh, this stuff's good. Uh-oh. Mm. I think that's the one that's plain coffee kombucha. Because the others that I made four with chocolate in it, and it tastes like mocha to me anyway, but this is a pecan flavor. It's so yummy. And so if, if, the, if the hair comes back, they know where it is. It's on the door. The hair came back. Very moment. I said that. So <laughs> you want to be very cautious when picking up objects that are hot. I am the first to tell you and the first to warn you that I have burned myself on many occasions. So... Oh, Scotland! Hey! Now there's a place I have yet to go. I'm going to have to be very careful. Oh. Wow. <laughs> We're 
Awareness is key. Knowing it's hot. Somebody out there likes that rainbow hair. Had a couple nice compliments about it. Okay, so I'm going to actually show you that it's not as hot as I thought it was, but it is going to get hot when I go to touch the bottom. So see, we're pouring in the cacao butter. Hey, Rainbow Dude. It's bubbling. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Bubble, 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 bubble. I'll show it to you in a second. I don't like to miss any of it. I know it sounds funny, but to me, like I said, it's like precious gold. You want to make sure you scrape it on down. You get every last drop. Can you smell the cacao? Gonna get some thumb action here now. <coughs> and now, I think, not yet. This still needs to warm up a little. Let me just stir this one around, make sure that that one little bit melts up in my butter. Oh, we definitely need that. That has recipe instructions. Have to melt. Everything has to be perfectly melting. And then we have a few Ayurvedic herbs to add as well, and flavors and sweeteners. You can use maple syrup, you can use coconut nectar. I also like to add in the coconut granules and they kind of add a nice little crunch to it at the, with it. And a little bit of salt for flavor balancing brings out the sweet and the, uh, the nice flavors. <laughs> uh, just a shot. Oh yes, dramatic poor darling. I'll leave it to you. You can drink it out of the bottle if you want. Or you can pour it with, with grace. And flip the hair. I'm gonna pop in the pinky. like toast, buttered toast. And I'm pouring in. This is the best part. And I don't know about y'all, but like I said, I am so not going to waste any of my cannabis butter. If anybody's going to be high, it's going to be me here shortly with my my dad's chocolates, which very tasty, just like angel food cake, but with chocolate. Tastes like chocolate. Has anybody out there made their own edibles like chocolates like this? Or if you have a favorite edible that you prepare yourself, I'd love to know. If you haven't already told me where you're from in the comments, let me know where you're tuning in from. Let me know if your state is legal. 
I know there's some states that I didn't realize weren't legal. Seems like a lot of us are behind the times when it comes to getting legalized over here. Finally, Florida is supposed to be, but I don't know. There's some loopholes in there, too. But it's about time. High times. So I have this big old clump of raw chocolate in here. I'm just going to lick this because this stuff's good. Oh, sweet. You're up the street from me. I'm in Clearwater, Florida. Mm-hmm. Washington State, Oregon, I'm telling, I'm telling y'all out on the West Coast, you get so lucky, so, so lucky. And so this is what my chocolate looks like right now. And because it's raw cacao powder, I kind of like do this little scoopy thing where I take the, the spoon and I, I kind of like do this little alchemist stirring where I'm pushing down on it so that I'm getting any excess clumps softened and you know because have you ever had that happen like if you don't mix it properly you're gonna end up with a mess you're gonna end up with chunks and powder in there and nobody wants that I've heard that Australia is pretty strict and it's very restrictive even with hemp seeds right and they just try to make sure nobody has access to it. And I don't understand that, but, you know, power to the people, united we stand, do matter we fall, doesn't matter where you're from. I am all about returning to Mother Nature and, uh, you know, Mother Nature is the healer. We're our own healers too. I mean, even if we didn't rely on herbs, our body is so capable of healing. It's a mind over matter, right? The body actually, the body actually responds to the mind. And so whatever your thoughts are, it's going to create whatever goes on in the body is what I found. I am originally from Massachusetts myself. And my dad's been talking about how up there, I guess it's supposed to be legal to grow and all. I, we also lived in Maine. And I know, I know there's a lot of amazing places up there. Um... And you know, there's nothing wrong with states and towns um, sovereignty, you know, city sovereignty where you the people take back and they don't go by the laws of the government in this form, that the people make the rules and the laws of their, their area. <laughs> I love it. So much fun. What? What? How is it? Bottoms up. Pinky popping. Bottoms up. Super yum. He's drinking. He's sipping on sensual food. Cause you realize when you engage your senses, it becomes sensual. What's the the uh, epitomology of words, right? Have you had these before? OMG. That's all I'm saying. So now I need to. Now we're moving on to my Ayurvedas. What do we got? Um, so I've got my special little book. Admin here, first off. Don't allow what? So, Lakuma. I need Lakuma. Probably about 50 grams is my theory. 70 grams. 70 grams of lacuma. I have lacuma. Lacuma is good. Lacuma gives it a caramel flavor to it. being immodest with my t my tank top. Oops, wrong top. I thought it was being pretty good. Where did I put my cap? Oops. 
in the process of making this chocolate. And so hey y'all, sorry about that. I don't know what happened just then. Funky stuff happens all the time. You know that, don't we? Especially here on Facebook. Got my lacuma and I gotta measure it out. And let me tell you, did I mention already that the dad's little mini cup of cakes, those silver dollars, kicking in? What, it's still a figment of your imagination. It's all the hair. So lacuma imparts like this amazing, yummy, like caramel flavor to it. I love lacuma. If you like just mix this with some coconut oil, some chocolate, it's like it's like caramel chocolate sauce. It really gives it a nice buttery flavor and sweetens it too. It's just one of the many superfoods out there, if you didn't already know. So I'm looking at about 70 to 80 grams for this mix. Right now I'm measuring it out and we're already at 35, 44. Oh gosh, it might be the whole thing. 52. I think I'm going to end up with the whole thing. Okay, we're going to probably be stuck at 70. I think I'm out of lacuma. No, I've got more lacuma. If I need more, I always got a stash in the back. So again, if you haven't already said down in the comments, where are you from? Is, it, is cannabis legal in your state? I'm here in Clearwater, Florida, and if I can't keep up with your comments, I apologize. Um, sometimes cannabis edibles give me a little bit of like, like, <laughs> kind of like that whole, aside from the brain fog, the thing where I'm like, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> it kind of gives me a tickle in my throat, and sometimes it brings my sinuses out, and, and it clears them, though. That's the irony with what I deal with. You like my butterflies and my hearts. Oh, it's all about the love, spreading love, right? Ease and grace. You know me. I'm all about flowing, and I'm in my kitchen, my my love lab, the love alchemist kitchen. I love, love, love sharing my tasty bites. It's pieces of me when you get the dust in me. It's nourishing love bites that I serve you up with. Can you tell how much I enjoy this? So we got 70.8. Ooh, that's kind of close. I kind of want more. Let's see. I'm just looking through all of my old um, recipes and I compare my, the ingredients that I put in. This is, like I said, this is my little, my special Bible over here. So I can actually get away with the 70.8. So we'll put 70.8. 70.09 actually grams of lacuma powder. We'll deal with the refills later. And then on top of that, I have all these amazing herbs and supplements that I like to mix in there as well, which in my opinion, my experience, enhance the healing qualities of the, um, the cannabis. And so, oh, it has such a sweet smell to it too. Kind of messy, but so adding it to the chocolate, like I said before, I'm doing this all by hand, stirring it up. Oh my gosh, that smells so good! And you have to remember, my chocolate smell is not just about the chocolate, there's that buttered toast smell in there, chocolatey buttered toast. You give me something to share with my dad next time he comes over. And get his feedback. Hey, Dad, how you like my edibles now? He, my dad, really likes my chocolates. My dad has had my chocolates, and he does like mine. Um, that's the fun part is he makes his, and I'm his guinea pig. Again, his dosage is usually more than my to my tolerance level, so I always know to cut it in half at least, if not a quarter. I'm not trying to go crazy. I like the medicinal qualities. I'm not, I need to be able to function in my life. I'm not, a, I can't do the couch potato highs, people. I, I'm, a, I'm a very busy-minded person to begin with, and so the idea of me not being able to do anything and just be like, coma toast, no, it doesn't function for me. If anything, I need the relaxation because I have an overactive mind, but more so the reason I started using edibles is because of my physical ailments and my, my chronic pain. So I had spent over 10 years in the Air Force and as a result of many different um, jobs that I ha held, 
I was in the computer industry um, way over um, 20 years. And sitting in a chair in itself is, is a hazard, but also working in cold, um, raised floors, uh, computer rooms, um, clean rooms they call them too, or server laboratory labs, um, server farms, data processing centers. Uh, yeah, very, very cold conditions. I don't deal well with the cold, which is why I live in the sunshine state. So I hope for those of you who do have issues with cold, you at least are able to choose whether or not you're in a comfortable, loving space for you. Because that's what really makes life, the quality of life, and you know, so much more vibrant. <clears throat> so moving on with our ingredients. I usually write these in, in, in order of ingredients. Oh, so baobab, ba uh, or baobab, I'm not gonna do that. Maple syrup, I do put some ginger in there. I'm not even gonna measure out some of these ingredients because I know what I put in here most of the times. So I have powdered ginger. It's really better if I can get it already broken down, broken down, because what happens if it's not, it becomes chunky and it's one more thing I've got to shake up and stir up properly. <clears throat> I know I've got another one in there, but what we're gonna do, make it so that the powder is all that comes out. See, ginger is anti-inflammatory, so it's really healing as well. And when you use ginger, on top of these superfoods, you're allowing your body more healing herbs, supportive of your immune system, heating, because ginger is great for heating. So we've got that. And then I love ashwagandha, is another big one. Let's tear that again. Ashwagandha is really helpful for um, balancing and tonifying your system. Your adrenals, it's very good for those of us who are stressed out. Let me see, so ashwagandha we need 5.4 grams. Actually, no, that's the smaller recipe, so we want 6.5 grams. There's 512. 6.5, right? We'll go with 677. Seven. That works. See, I'm telling you, it's really key to take notes. 6.77 grams ashwagandha. Makuna purines is another good one. So we're going to add Makuna. Makuna matata. I love words. So much fun. So we have 6.77 now, and we're going to add seven, let's see, close to eight. So technically, we're going to go eight. Eight and six is 14. So we'll do this. So we really want 13 and a half. Oh, well, we got 14.38. That'll work. I always laugh at myself when I do this because I'm looking at it going, you know you're not going to go exactly to measurement. That's how, just how it ends up happening. Makuna Purians. It's another wonderful adaptogen for women and men. What should I say? 14? So 1439, we're looking at 14... Sixty-two, eight sixty-two. Macuna Fermions grams. So I hope you're all enjoying this evening. I am just like astounded here. I'm just rocking and rolling with this. I haven't made these in a while, so I'm kind of, I'm not only excited because I'm getting to share it with you, and I'm gonna tell you, please write down these ingredients. But don't don't you know like I, even if I share them, this is my recipe. And I can't even guarantee you what I give you is, is, this is, I'll give you the base recipe. You decide if you want to put the rest in. That's really the best I can offer you. And so, 
So we got that, and now, again, you always just wanna keep stirring in and make sure that uh, the temperature stays warm enough to keep this liquidy enough, because then I have all these molds in the refrigerator I keep in my freezer. And you fill the molds, and use whatever molds you have available, it's your choice. What I've done in the past, too, is take the um, parchment paper and just make a thin strip, and just so it's like bark. And then you can add in whatever you want for like goji berries or nuts and seeds, whatever it is you want to add to it. Make it your own. This is the fun about being in the love lab is you get to create it. You create your magic, turning everything that you create with love from your heart into gold. And I've got chunks in here because I can see them. And I use my spoon, like I said, so you can see that, right? So I'll take the spoon and I'll kind of do like this dance where it's like going up and down and waffling. It's like going like this. So I'm using the back of the spoon to kind of crush down any of those powdery pieces. I, I've tried to whip it, it doesn't always work. I'm not even gonna get into like using a whipping or anything. Too much work. Again, it, to me, it's it's being made from my heart and my hands and my love, so I think it's all perfect. And then I have, so, now we're on to, I could put the baobab in there, and it says 21 grams, so let's do that. And then we're going to also, actually, I'm going to put this in here first. So this is mesquite. I've put maca before, but I'm just not crazy about maca anymore. To me, I feel like maca is... Um, doesn't resonate with my body. If anybody out there's been able to find it work for them, I, I I really think it didn't help me at all. So much the mesquite I'm gonna put in about four four and a half grams, or four seven four is what I got in there now. Love mesquite. Mesquite again, another adaptogen. Got the baobab. So I'm writing this down. And see, this is the thing about the scale, it'll shift a little. So now it says 477. 477 grams of mesquite. And then we're gonna do baobab, which again is another amazing superfood. Very good for you. High in vitamin C and potassium. We're going to go about 21 grams is what I'm thinking. So that should put me at 25.77. Here we are. Now this stuff has such an interesting smell. And it's, I like it. It can make things taste like a, like a yogurty smoothie. What did I say? I had seven, four. So 21 and four will put us at 25. We're at 20 almost 21. Here we go. We're coming up. So we're at 25.7. Oh, look at that right on the nose. So I got 21 on the nose. How rad is that? That doesn't always happen, by the way. Well, it does if I want it to, but if I'm really, if I'm doing this more regularly as well, because I usually make these more often. But I haven't had time with the holidays and all the work I've been working on and the you know, like I do dedicate my time for something that's uh, life-changing for others. And to me, that's like, that's my purpose here in life is to serve. And as that's why I'm showing up for all y'all, because y'all inspire me to show up for you. So hopefully you enjoying this video that you've spread the love on that share button, right? Make sure your notifications are turned on so that when I go live or... You never know, maybe Tom goes live. You gotta make sure you see it. Because you just don't know what we're gonna bring up here in the house. Because we got many flavors. And these are just some of the little nuggets, golden nuggets you get so far, right? So we got 21 grams of bao bao. And then we're gonna go into, let's see. Shilaji, we have a gram. So, shilaji is a resin, and it's a um, fulvic acid. And we're gonna go. We're gonna rough. We're gonna hope for a gram. 
So one gram would put us at 26, 77. And I want to make sure this one's powdery because it becomes hard and it can be hard to mix in there as well. Oh, look at that, we're almost there. Eleven. And we're almost there. Point zero five to go. There we go. Oh, just a hair more. See how, how meticulous I can be on this. There we go. Right on the money. One gram of Sheila G. Then there's this stuff called Gugulu. I just like saying Gugulu, right? Like how rad is that name? Gugulu. And this is another resin. And this is very, it's an expensive one too. It's Ayurvedic. And here's what it looks like. Smell wise, it's it's very, it's got kind of like that frankincense, myrrh kind of flavor smelling. But with this one, you gotta make sure that you, you get it ground up really good. I don't want any of the, like when it's hard and, and lumpy, because it'd be harder to deal with. What did I just say? One gram of Sheila G. And then we're doing one gram, or Gugulu. Look that one up, that's pretty rad. The benefits of Gugulu. So we're looking at, I think it's gonna be two or three even. Oh, three and a half. So we're gonna stick to, let's go for three. Let's see how that fits in there. This one's another precious golden one. So you definitely don't wanna waste your Gugulu. Goo 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 goo. So we're at 26, we want 29. Yeah, so share with me, let me know if there's any medicinals and edibles that you like yourself. Do you make your own? If you do, afterward, I'd love to see pictures. Picture post afterward in this comment thread would be ridiculous. 29, we're going for 29 still. Twenty-nine point seven seven is the target number. I hope you like this new perspective in my kitchen. I'm trying to change it up so you can see me better. So yeah, twenty-nine forty-five fifty. The Google is a little harder to work with, like I said. It's amazing stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. And that's what I'm gonna say about that. That's all I got to say about that. Love Forrest Gump, great movie, right? All right, so we've covered that aisle of my pantry. So we went with three grams of googaloo. Googaloo, I love you. Googaloo, I love you. And so I had to turn the heat on in my house because I was actually really cold because I took a walk. And despite it being nice out at one point, the temperature dropped something fierce. So, and fortunately I had my jacket with me. So we got um, googaloo, mesquite, ashwagandha, mercury and prurines, Baobab. So there's some other things that I use in here. I have um, horsetail, Sheila G. Oh, sh the horsetail and actually, I didn't mean Sheila G there. I'm looking at horsetail. My other little spices. Okay, first off, when I do nutmeg, something about nutmeg, it enhances the flavor of vanilla. Just my opinion. But before we forget, I've got this pile of measured herbs that need to go in and mix around. So did I mention that that cupcake kicked in? So here I am thinking it's already in there and it's still sitting on the, on the scale. So here we are mixing it up. 
can all see that? All that yumminess gonna be turned into chocolate. I still have to put the sweetener in there. I haven't even tasted this yet to try to see the flavor combo yet. Um, I Because I've done the recipe, initially I, I was just tasting and doing. And um, what I like to also do, I have like little Reese cup size style molds in my refrigerator. And I like to put it in the freezer after I fill them each up about halfway. And then I'll add some of the almond butter in the middle. And what I like to do that helps too, is maybe I'll put a little drop of vanilla stevia, or I also have the, let's see, where are ya? Because it's almond, I put a little almond extract and there's a little sweetening to this, so it kind of enhances that flavor too, along with the vanilla. And then when it's hardened up with the almond butter, or after it's hardened up, I put the almond butter, and then I put another layer of the chocolate in there. So this is a big batch. When I peel out the big bowls, I know it's a big batch. So I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope you like chocolate because this is the bomb diggity, y'all. So the other ingredients I need are over here as I slightly pull out of the screen here. I have, um, this is horsetail powder, which is great for silica, building block for nails, uh, skin, and uh, teeth, bones, hair. So you've got the horsetail, we're looking at about three grams. Horsetail. And then we've got nettle root powder. I'm gonna see if we get nettle root on this one. This one doesn't say nettle root, which is really weird because normally I mix them about equal, equal, I think. Horsetail and maybe we'll put it in that one. See, I'm learning just looking at my own recipes. I just swore it was in there. I'll put them both. I'll put three three grams of each. So this is the horsetail, and I, I buy in bulk because it's just cheaper that way. And so here we go, three grams. Not sure of how much that okay, so that's almost one gram. We're looking at two. Almost three. Oh, we need that much more. 307. On top of that, this is nettle. See the difference in color? One is green and the other is like kind of a beige, right? So we're gonna do three grams of both. Flavor-wise, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of nutty to me. I'm a little nutty sometimes, too. I know, y'all are like, yep, we know. We watch ya. We seen ya. Okay, so that actually was a little bit more than three. But that's okay. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect measurements. I do this enough that I'm happy with if it's a little here or there. And then I have some other special herbs over off the side here. Go to cola and bring bring garage leaf. So um, yeah, that one I like Banyan Botanicals. It's actually one of my favorite brands, and I know you can get them on Amazon. So we'll try to share those links links for you as well. And so we have Go to Cola, also known as Brahmi, has some other names as well. How much bro Brahmi? La, 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 la. See, it does require a little bit more attention than just doing. So we're going to go two and two. Go to Cola and bring Garage. <laughs> Roughly two grams, basically. And so, little patient goes a long way. And you know, when you're making these, you really want to enjoy 
the process anyway. So we're looking at eight. Eight and some change. Okay, we're good. That's the go-to cola or brownie. And you know what? I got these chips over here, some of left here. These, if you haven't had them, may not be the most optimal, but they're light. Few ingredients. This is cassava flour, avocado oil, coconut flour, ground, chia seeds, sea salt, citric acid, and lime oil. They're really good. And I made a little sauce in there, my spicy almond sauce. Really good for chip dipping. Especially when you need a little crunch. Oh, maybe the munchies are kicking in too. So two more. So we're doing two grams of the Bring, bring Garage. So now we're going to 10 and some change. Perfect. Two grams of each. <clears throat> Keep stepping on something down there. Hmm. And so on top of that, what else do I need? So those two taken care of. Mm, this is when we start getting into more of the flavoring. I have not yet added um, the maple syrup or maybe I'm gonna use the coconut uh, nectar only because it's gonna be cold because I keep it in the fridge. And I wanna make sure that everything is mixed really well and it continues to keep the liquidy um, you know, you want it to be like this until, again, I can still see chunkiness in there. So it's going to require more and more stirring. And I, you know, I've spent, I've spent several hours because this is such a, a labor of love for me. Chocolates are something extremely close to my heart. Like this, these are really, really just mm. pleasure principle, pure malt pleasure. Pure sensual food, engaging the sensuality and all those five senses and your spidey sense too. Your intimacy, I, I see into you, you see into me. It's sensual. Okay, so can you tell I really enjoy this? Just a bit, just a bit. Nutmeg, we're going to go 0 0.35 grams or let's go... Let's go 40, and that'll put me at 10, 56, or 10, 55 will be fine. Oops, there we go. Well, 10, 60, that's fine. <laughs> Nutmeg, point 40, point 0.4 grams. And then we need, so we do use salt. I do use salt in here. And I use, this particular salt is a little less um, uh, coarse than the Himalayan, which I love. And so we're gonna use 53 grams, basically. So now we're at 1060. So we're gonna get 40 more. Ooh. So I think we did 70. That's okay. A little extra salt's not going to kill us. I think we'll be fine. 0.7 on the salt. Or 0.65, something like that. Salt. I haven't done the vanilla yet. And we get we did the ginger. Cinnamon, I real I only use Ceylon cinnamon specifically because it's good for balancing blood sugar. Mm. If you like, lay your tongue on this. Mm. You can feel the lime. Mm. Mm -mm. So now, cinnamon, 
we're looking at about 0.7 grams, which will put us at 12, no, it'll put us at 13.05. Perfect. Absolutely right on the mark. <laughs> Patience pays. And sometimes I have like, the, like this is my white kratom. Not the most flavorful. I've put it in smoothies though and it's palatable. People call it a toss and wash where you throw it in and you drink it down with water. That's what I do myself, but yeah, that's my quick and dirty. But if I need it in a smoothie, one of my favorite smoothies to put it in is the hemp seeds and uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do those little red berries? They're called pomegranates. That makes a nice mix. <coughs> Oop, I got a chunky one. So yeah, that's the other thing is you want to make sure that it's stirred around properly because in the beginning, everything's going to settle to the bottom and you're going to have all this moist, all the liquid on the top, on the surface. So that's one little key when you're doing this. Hey, a piece of jackfruit. No, oh, that was yummy. You know you want some. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pour this in here. I don't know what you're thinking. She's got the munchies. And I might. Of course, I'm always hungry anyway, so. Mmm, dramatic stir. It was the best thing you stirred today. For me, it's my chocolate. Right here, right now. In this. <laughs> yeah, man, this is gonna be so good. I wish I could share it with all of you. Get in my belly. Especially if you have never had ed edibles. I'm telling you, these are so medicinal. I've had some friends tell me I didn't feel anything. And other friends tell me, what did you put in those chocolates? So, you know, everybody's sensitivity, especially if you've worked up a tolerance, what would what will make you high won't make another high. It might, might not make anybody high and vice versa. <sighs> la 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 la. Does anybody else out there get so excited when they're in their kitchen? I'm telling you, this is like the bomb. So I already did the cinnamon and the nutmeg, and I just what do we have left? Allspice. So I have a little jar of allspice. Makes everything nice. Gotta be a poet even if you don't know it. Allspice, we're looking at 54 grams. I think that's good right there. I got 55. Perfect, 55 on the nose. 0.55 grams of allspice. And the way that I've found that this intuitively came through me, everything seems to balance its, each other out. And uh, It's all trial and error. If you don't make a mistake, how can you be led in the right direction, right? That's one thing I've learned in my life for certain, that every... Every failure or every success is an opportunity, and an opportunity is an open port, which means you have that opportunity to go through the open door or to come out the closed door, right? So the doorway could lead in or it can go out. It's a choice, and it's also perception. 
<coughs> you may find something to be challenging only because you don't want to deal with it. But whatever's in you can't come out unless something external triggers it, right? Everything that's inside of us has to come out eventually. And that's what reveals our true nature. And brings us into awareness of our own self, right? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I need to put the sweetener now? No. We still need vanilla. I want to use some vanilla bean in this one. I'm looking for that other recipe. So my big recipe says vanilla 0.87 grams. So my vanilla is up here. So I have some like granules of vanilla. We want 0.87, so we got 0.50. 35 after. Just a little bit more. Mm. <sighs> so what I said was 0.55 in the allspice. Now I've got 141 adding the vanilla bean. And so... Let's see, five. Did I say 85? 85 grams. So we get 85 grams. I'm enjoying these chips, by the way. This will kind of cut cut off the any sweetness if I do try this. Ooh, I didn't think about doing that. Mmm, that's a good idea. Those in the ch in the sauce. Who'd have thought? <clears throat> well, yeah, you gotta think outside the box, you never know. You could find your niche. So now we're gonna do, okay, what I'm gonna do is get, <coughs> I like mixing this in as well. So these are the coconut crystals. I kinda like the texture of having the granular in there. I'm telling you, this is really good, good way to do it too. So we're gonna put 20 grams of coconut crystals, so it'll come out to 21. I put 25. Let's do that. 25 grams. So it'll be 26 and 24. Yeah, that's fine. 25 grams of Coconut, uh, coconut crystals. So that's... Hmm. Wow, look at that. So now we're going to pour this in. Right. Oh, if I slow down, let's see, what kind of stories can I share with you? I'm trying to think, what was the first time I ever got high? Probably when I was younger. I know I got high at a young age. I just don't remember what age I was. I do remember. <laughs> I do remember. How when I was younger, I um, hmm, I used to I I was it was hard for me to do the bong, especially the six footer. My friends would actually raise it up, and then I'd suck up the the air. Oh my god, crazy! I was always a silly high. You get very relaxed and laugh. Just laugh. Come up with funny stuff to say. Just on the fly, right? Mm. So now we're going to go into the sweetener along with hmm. I'm going to put 
put five drops of almond extract. I've got vanilla and butterscotch stevia, which I'm going to use for flavors. Let's say 10 drops of vanilla. And we're going to go with at least 15 of butterscotch. It's actually butterscotch toffee. And then if there's anything else we're looking at. Um, so if I do maple syrup, it's going to be about 4, 4.415. Grams or is that ounces? Let's see where to go. Maple syrup. Oh wait, no, it's more like um. Ooh, hello. So you got to be very careful and pay attention to your details in here. So we've got eighty-one or two. Okay, so I could do. 81 grams or also ounces would be 286 ounces of maple syrup. So let's see. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to actually tear because I've got all my herbs measured. I'm going to use this because there's already some coconut oil in there, the cannabis oil, and I don't want to waste it because you know when we're done in this broadcast anything that's stuck in there is all going getting licked you know I lick everything <laughs> even when I make this chocolate though I can tell you right now not an ounce of the chocolate goes to waste um, because of the, the mixture it doesn't even stick and I have a nice spatula that gets every last morsel which is amazing and I love that same color as my top I learned a new term tonight, which I had never heard of. Bomb cyclone? Like when the temperature drops something like 25 degrees? Something crazy like that? We've, we've been having some interesting weather over the years. Major shifts and changes. I don't think all of it's normal. Okay, so we're going back to the vanilla. We want 15 drops of the vanilla stevia. Straight up. No, I said 10. 10 on the, the vanilla and 15 on the butterscotch toffee. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That was vanilla. And I did say 5 drops of almond extract. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There was 5. Ooh, I think I got some hot get out on me. And now, oh, it smells so good. These are what really enhance the flavors. <coughs> Butterscotch, baby. And, and just in case you're wondering, we'll drop links. We'll give you links to these Amazon links. I like this brand a lot. So now we're on the 15. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Voila. Mm. And now, either maple syrup or coconut. I think we're going to go with the maple syrup because I just really like the way maple syrup gives it a really richer flavor. My opinion, you do whatever you want, but I've already said that we're going to go with 81 grams, which is going to be 2.86 ounces roughly, or 2.8. 81 grams. Okay, make that 82.16. That's okay. I don't mind. A little extra maple syrup. I've never heard anyone. <laughs> and so, the fun begins. Actually, the fun continues, right? Oh, oh this is making my throat. That Those chips are making me the dryness of the chips. What, what? 
see, see, can you understand why I don't want to miss a beat? Because this stuff is all like liquid gold. <coughs> Time to drink the water. <coughs> see, I will be licking all that maple syrup and cannabis butter off. Because it's yummy. Okay, so we're done with my scale. My scale gets put away. And I, I use this because, I mean, like sometimes I measure out my, my kratom or uh, any other things that you need to measure in your, in your kitchen. It's, it's very helpful, actually. Never thought I'd use a scale as much as I do now. And if you're curious about this, I'll even drop a link if you want to get your own scale. Never know. So, mm. I'm gonna mix it really, really good. And pour that love into the prana, that life force. But before I forget, because I gotta drink some water before my throat starts up again. And y'all know I put everything away because I'm all about keeping my, my space tidy. This makes me feel less stressed. Again, that's why I need the cannabis. If you're still just turning in, make sure you're dropping in the comments. Where are you from? Is cannabis legal? Medis medicinal marijuana, marijuana, listen to me. Is medicinal marijuana available and legal in your state or your country or wherever you're tuning in from? Drop in the comments if you deal with chronic pain, how you deal with it. I'd love to know, please, because I'm, for myself even, I'm always looking for solutions that I may not even be aware of. And I'm familiar with so many different modalities out there. Some I've tried and some I haven't. You know, whether it's magic mushrooms or ayahuasca or DMT, MDMA or acid, LSD, or what else is there? Ibogaine, Ibo, 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 Iboga, Ibo, Ibo, that one always gets me a little tongue-tied. There's so much available to us that plant, you know, this earth, Mother Earth Gaia, um, you know, it's, it's our right to be able to choose and, yeah, there's so much out there, there really is, um, yeah, but, you know, it's also knowing your source, because there's also a lot of unreliable sources out there, you just have to know who you're dealing with, it's the same with your food, as you know, don't take anything at face value, do your own research, Take care of you. Recognize it's all self-care, self-love. If you don't have love for yourself, you can't extend it to others. So I'm gonna taste test now. Looks pretty. Oh yeah. These are freaking amazing. You can get in my nails. Mm. So I have a couple ways that I handle this because I like to put it on a board when I am pouring it in my molds. Now, I'm not gonna stay on the full broadcast with you all pouring every one of my molds, but I'm gonna do some of it while you're on with me. And so one thing I've gotta double check. When I've used both carob and cacao, I think I did half and half, and then I just wanna make sure my recipes here. 270 the cacao or, oh yeah these are gonna be a little thicker a little bit harder chips oh mm. I've made my own mushroom chocolates too mushroom chocolates these like if you've never tried microdosing like what I did was I had some chocolate with some shrooms and I made these really yummy chocolates with a bunch of, um, oh, that reminds me, one more thing's going in there. Almost forgot. Almost forgot. 
and I am going to make some of those special Reese's. So this, these are my Reese style, you know, you can, they got the ridges around the edges just like Reese cups did, but I'm going to do almond butter in the middle. What, what? That's all I'm saying. It's all about the yumminess. I just remember what I'm going to put in there though. Is, oh, that's brownie. And I have, I have a lot of molds. I have my heart molds. I have four leaf clover molds. And then I have a, a, a huge, and I'll, I'll use all of these because it's, that's how much chocolate I made. And this one, it has all different shapes, all these different shapes. So yeah, have fun. When you make chocolates, you choose your molds and just have a blast. One thing I'm gonna add to this I forgot about that I really like to add and I hadn't had until recently, I had to go get more. I like to use, um, this is rosehip powder, which is high in vitamin C, and we always need a little extra vitamin C to help aid in our healing. We're all a little deficient in areas that we don't even realize. Again, it's about balancing. So how much am I gonna put in here? I don't know if I wrote it down on any of the others. Um, I'm just gonna put, let's see if I can break this down. Rose hip powder, rose hip. Um, let's say half a teaspoon, just because, and I don't know how much that's gonna end up being as far as grams goes, but it's all good. Because this right here, make it a teaspoon, heck. I haven't had it in a while in my chocolate. I especially used it in the shroom chocolates because let me tell you, you need a little extra vitamin C to, to continue that process. And it's also part of the body um, break down and then build back up. It's so interesting to me how um, certain herbs and all these healing modalities get enhanced by different things. Like I said, uh, oils that are soluble and deliver the medicine to your body even more. I mean, to me, that's pretty powerful. And if you know the right combinations, like for example, with turmeric, you add black pepper to enhance the absorber absorption rate and also enhances its efficacy, efficacy, listen to me, efficacy, meaning that it's like if you take a little, it's a little bit of black pepper, it's more effective than taking a lot without it, which may not all be absorbed by your body. So yeah, the body's amazing, isn't it? That's why I want to hear what all of y'all do. Write in the comments, let me know what it is you find works for chronic pain or anxiety. Um, if you make your own medicinals, I want to see pictures too, by the way. And if you're not already part of the group, Ridiculously Authentic on Facebook, get your butt over there, Ninja Flip on in, make sure you invite, you know, you add yourself, join, provide us your email address so you can keep updated with meal plans and what we're coming up with. We've got all sorts of surprises and secrets for the new year that we want to share with y'all. And uh, yeah, introduce yourself. Go live in the group. That's one of the things we absolutely love is when y'all get in there. Forget us. I mean, you know, we can come live and, and, and enjoy, you know, interacting with y'all. But we want to see y'all introduce yourselves. And you signing in and sharing your story. Being raw authentic in your authenticity. You be you. And hey, come in the group and do something like this. Show us what your passion is in the kitchen. As long as you're not promoting any MLMs, external links, or sharing other people's content, it's all about you. You show up for you. My little stone. You be you, because there is no one else like you. You be you. And the beauty of you is there's no replication, no way that anybody could ever try to be like you. Nor should you ever try to be like anybody else. That's why we're here on this planet as individual expressions. Individual unique gifts and 
how we come together to enhance and inspire each other, those gifts in, in another, right? It's one of the things I really love about being in community and why Tom and I bought, created the group and this whole radiculously authentic um, community. It really is about dropping the dogma and all your belief systems and just showing up as you are unapologetically and in your personal power. Don't worry about what other people think about you because it's none of your business. Not only that, it's just a distraction. All that matters is that you approve of you and you love you. Self-love, I'm telling you, that's the golden nugget. That self-love is what alchemizes the alchemy of self-love, turns everything else in your life to gold. Because when you can sit with yourself and embrace every aspect, every experience you've ever had, you're going to show others that they can do the same just by showing up for you. And then they're going to be inspired and empowered in their own selves. That, oh, maybe it's okay to love myself. It's not selfish. It's actually selfless because when you show up for you, you're more available for others, right? So that brownie cupcake hasn't really kicked in like I thought it was kicking in. If anything, I feel like I'm waxing more poetic. Or am I talking too much? I was really like honing in on this beautiful, rich, fudgy chocolate over here. Right? Like, seriously. Who doesn't want some of that? See that beautiful food, sensual food, sexy chocolate. It's time to pour the molds, what do you think? Okay, so back to this part. This is the part that always cracks me up. So what I do is I have a glass tray, or cutting board we'll say. This is really a cutting board, by the way. And I tend to, it's all the little feeties fell off, so I guess it doesn't matter which way it goes in there, but I think I'm going to put the groove side down, just grooves, <clears throat> and this way it keeps the surface flat, and I just use a spoon, I, I kind of almost kind of know how much is going to go in there, it's roughly, <laughs> now I'm going to mess already, <laughs> are y'all like me? All sorts of funny stuff going on with your kitchen. As long as we're still connected, that's all that matters. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry about this. I'm going to show you in a second, though. So, yeah, and, and the thing is, is, you know, you can, you can it's, it's, it's your own creation. So, like I said, you can put nuts and seeds and... Maybe you want little granules of um, salt in there. Like some people like the salty brought out in the chocolates. Like sea salt chunks. And that's all perfect. As long as you like it, that's all that matters. <laughs> it's kind of messy. So I'm going to actually show you what I've done so far, just to give you an idea. I mean, this is messy, but hey, you know, I've got, I've got eyes on me at the same time too. So get yourself some molds, try out the chocolates, let me know what you think. If you try this recipe, again, I'm, I'm just going to say go with whatever I wrote in there, whatever I was saying. Um, <laughs> the base of the chocolate ratio to the cacao pot butter because you want to melt the cacao butter you want to make sure they're equal parts so that you get a solid chocolate and not too soft or not too hard you want just right you can add the cannabis oil as well as some maple syrup for flavors you can sweeten up and give it vanilla with the omega the vanilla stevia you can add whatever spices and herbs that you desire because again make it your own that's what this is all about is really you know you, you're gonna create your own recipe even if I give it to you you're gonna tweak it the way you need to be tweaking it what feels right for you so yeah I hope you're all having a rockin' rad day thank you for showing up in my kitchen 
Hi Milana, moving with ease and grace, dancing in this sacred space, sending you out love from my heart. Keep it raw, stay rad. I love you. What, what?